Hello there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. So the new Samsung S24 series has been launched. We've got the S24, the S24 Plus and the S24 Ultra. But we are now in the situation where we were previously that some consumers will get an S24 or an S24 Plus with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor. And some people, when they buy those devices, will get them with an Exynos 2400 processor made by Samsung. So the question is, what are the differences? Is there a difference in the CPU, the GPU? What about the performance? What about the features overall? Connectivity, for example. Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 versus Exynos 2400. Now the Samsung Galaxy S24 and S24 Plus are powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 or Samsung's own Exynos 2400 chipset, depending on the region where you live. If you're in the USA, for example, you're not gonna get the Exynos, you're gonna get the Snapdragon. Now the Exynos 2400 powers the S24 and the S24 Plus in several markets outside of the USA. And all models of the Galaxy S24 Ultra use the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy. So that's important that if you really are looking for a Snapdragon model, you have to go for the Ultra if you're outside of, I think it's the USA, maybe uh, South Korea, places like that. So let's look at the CPU. So first of all, we can see here that uh, the Exynos 2400 has 10 cores, whereas the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has eight cores. So that puts us in a really interesting starting point that 10 cores, uh, a Deca core, we haven't seen one of those for quite a while. There was one by MediaTek a, a while back, but this is gonna be interesting. What does this mean for performance? Well, we'll talk more about that in a minute, but the configuration of the Exynos is one plus two plus three plus four. So you've got one X4 core clocked at 3.2 gigahertz, two A720 cores clocked at 2.9 gigahertz, then three a720 cores again so there's five a720 cores in total but the third lot are clocked at 2.6 gigahertz and then at the end we have four cortex a520s clocked at 1.95 gigahertz now the eight cores of the snapdragon 8 gen 3 are 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2 so you've got that cortex x4 core clocked slightly higher than the one in the Exynos, 3.3 gigahertz. Then you've got three A720s at 3.2 gigahertz, so that's clocked higher than the higher clocked A720s in the Exynos, 2.9 gigahertz versus 3.2 gigahertz. And then you've got two A720s at three gigahertz. So even the slower ones are actually faster than the faster ones in the Exynos 20, uh, 2400, if you follow me there. So it's a one plus three plus two, so again, five A720s, but clocked much higher and then at the end two rather than four so that's where the difference is this this extra two cortex a520 cores that they've got in the exynos 2400 but even still here the a520s are clocked higher 2.3 gigahertz in the snapdragon 8 gen 3 and then when we get to the gpu you've got the amd eclipse 940 940 in the exynos which is an amd rdna 3 based gpu it features ray tracing and Fidelity FX Super Resolution. And then in the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, you've got the Adreno 750, which of course is based on Qualcomm's Adreno GPU architecture, and it's got ray tracing and it's got Snapdragon Game Super Resolution. So in terms of functionality, ray tracing and upscaling, they are very similar, very different GPUs in terms of their internals, one from AMD, one from uh, Qualcomm. And then they're both built on a four nanometer process. The Exynos is built using Samsung's four LPP plus process node. And the Snapdragon is built using TSMC's N4 process node. Now, some people have expressed concerns with Samsung's uh, process nodes in the past, uh, particularly when it came to the thermals or to the battery life. So we'll see uh, when these devices come out and we get them in our hands, whether there is any problems in terms of thermals and battery life with the Exynos 2400 based devices. And it's quickly worth mentioning connectivity, different modems. So in the Exynos, you've got the Exynos 5300 5G modem with a top speed of 12 
1,120 megabits per second down, 3,370 megabits up. But these are, of course, theoretical speeds in absolutely ideal con uh, conditions. Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has got the X75 uh, integrated modem, 10,000 megabits down and 3,500 megabits up. I think in real life that's not going to make any difference whatsoever because there's so many more factors to do with, you know, cell towers and the frequencies that it's using, sub six and so on. So uh, I really wouldn't read much into that. However, there is a difference here when it comes to the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. 5.3 versus 5.4. Okay, again, I don't think it's going to be an issue, but the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 does support Wi-Fi 7, whereas the Exynos 2400 only supports Wi-Fi 6 and backwards, so 6.5 uh, and so on. So as a result of that, Wi-Fi 7 is disabled on all Galaxy S24 and S24 Plus variants, regardless of the processor it's got in it, because of the 2400 doesn't support Wi-Fi 7. And that way, Samsung won't get customers complaining that, uh, that their friend who's got the other one uh, has got Wi-Fi 7 and they haven't. But do note that the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra will have Wi-Fi 7 because that's got the Snapdragon chip in it across the globe. Now, of course, when it comes to performance, we don't know yet. So we really have to wait and see until the devices are actually in the hands of consumers and reviewers to see what the performance is. However, there have been some leaked uh, benchmarks. Now, I'm not really into leaked stuff. However, I thought it was worth mentioning because I've seen several different leaks that kind of corroborate this general idea. I will reserve with a caveat of this, with reservation saying these are leaks, these are not in any way confirmed results. However, it seems that the Snapdragon has a slight lead in single core performance. You'd expect that because it clocked at a higher clock speed. But surprisingly, the Snapdragon also has a lead in multi-core performance. So it looks like having those eight cores, but all of them clocked higher than you find in the Exynos 2400 seems to make a difference uh, to the multi-core score, even though the uh, Exynos has got uh, two more extra cores, uh, it seems that the Snapdragon comes out on top. So that's interesting. I'd love to wait to see we have that confirmed because that really will be quite interesting. And then when it turns into the GPU, it seems like the Snapdragon has a notable lead in GPU performance. So it doesn't look like the uh, the Eclipse uh, GPU has the same kind of performance levels as the, uh, the Qualcomm. However, these are all completely unconfirmed based on rumors. Again, emphasize, we'll have to wait till we get the devices in hand. And the other thing that we don't know is what this means in terms of thermals and what it means in terms of sustained performance. So these are all things that are really gonna have to be dived into to find out the answers. Okay, but does it matter? This is the real question. Does it matter? Short answer, no. Uh, I mean, we're talking flagship processors here inside flagship phones and uh, Samsung ensures that the customers receive the same features whether they buy the Exynos or the Snapdragon uh, version so you know the generative AI stuff the Wi-Fi stuff you're not going to have one that feels kind of it's missing something in terms of overall features Samsung have made sure that's not going to be an issue you can buy an S24 Ultra if you really 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 want uh, a version with the Snapdragon in it rather than Exynos version in your area. And we'll have to wait and see long term if any other differences appear. But back to my first point, the short answer is no, it really won't make any actual real world difference. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments below your thoughts on the two variants of the S24 and the S24 Plus. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.